Hi, Baha. Thank you for speaking with me today. I'm Malika. I'm one of the hosts at Urban Nation. And I'm really excited to kind of go deeper into not only your role as Thajthar in Hira Mundi, but also kind of your journey into the industry. Um, so thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you very much for having me. And of course, Roshi is a great friend of mine. So he's been supporting me for more than a decade now. So, um, you know, this was a big apology to her that I've I've kept her pending. In fact, I, I've been telling my team to like set this up and um, unfortunately it has not been done. So I apologize to both you and her. No, no, not at all. No worries at all. I'm really excited to kind of learn more about your like journey into the industry, but then also how you came to the role of Bajdar. Um, so you went through a round of auditions. I remember seeing one of the interviews that you did. You said you went through several, several rounds of auditions and screen tests for Thajdar. And, you know, it was a very long process to kind of get to the role of Thajdar in Hiramundi. So what about the character really drew you into it that you felt like, I want to do this. Like, this is worth it for me to go through all of these rounds of auditions and screen tests, et cetera, because this character really speaks to me. What about him was there for that, for you? Um, there's only one answer to that, and that's Mr. Sanjay Lila Bansali. Okay, yeah. All right, I mean, no actor would say no to him for any role. And yeah. to be very honest, um, I actually signed on for a three-day role. Oh, okay. Right. And, um, and that too, I was chasing the audition for about 15 months me and my friend Tushar. So we yeah. like literally begged and pleaded the casting agents to just kind of, you know, um, consider us for any role really. Okay. And um, finally after 15 months when Shruti um, decided to, uh, we kind of pounced on it. And uh, we didn't realize that initially that it was a small role until she told us that it was just about a three day role. Okay. But uh, we said, you know what, I really want to work with Mr. Bansali. And if not in this project, then most probably in the next project, because he's, he's known to repeat his actors, right? And if he thinks that I'm a good actor, then he will repeat me in his next project. Yeah. So it was completely a risk. And uh, I was willing to take it because, you know, there's nothing to lose. I really yeah. had nothing going for me, really. So um, I said, all right, I'll do it. But about three weeks down, I get a call from his from his office saying that he wants to meet me. So I drop by his office and then he speaks to me about all the stuff that I've done in the past. And, um, you know, and that I told him and then he said, you've done a lot of work, but nobody really knows you. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, you know, I'm trying, really trying. But um, he said, you know what? Surely don't give him this role give him Balraj's role, right? Which was Tajdar's best friend's role, yeah. right? So he increased my role and that hardly happens in this, in any. So I went for the lip test and um, I think I did really well. And I was just hoping that, you know, I, you know, they locked me for this really quick. So the contract started and I was waiting for the contract for about two weeks. And when I was on the way to sign that contract, I get another call from the office and they're like, we're really sorry, but, you know, um, sir has decided to go another way with you and you might not be getting this role, basically. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah. you know, this always seems to be the problem. Every time I'm about to land something good, yeah. something happens, you know, something bad happens. So I went to him and uh, because he wanted to meet me and without even listening to him, I basically just kind of you know, held his hands and just kind of pleaded to him that, sir, please, please don't take me out of this role. This, you know, this means the world to me. And, uh, you know, it's the biggest opportunity of my life. Please just, just if I did something wrong, just forgive me. And he's like, you know, just have a seat, have a seat. So I sat down and I was very nervous. I was stressed. And then he just looks at me and he says, you know, I really like your, your look test. And, um, there's something in your eyes and I want you for the lead role of my series, Tajdar Baloch. Wow. So I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't give him any reaction, to be honest. And then he's like, you don't want it. 
and I'm like, I, I don't understand what you are saying yeah. at the moment, sir. Right? I mean, um, I mean, what? He's like, he's like, yes, go, go get ready for, you know, I want you to do, uh, I want you to do a test right now. And um, so that's actually when my actual auditions for Thar Star happened was okay. that same day when he told me that. And then everything was just helter skelter. I was just really, really like, you know, didn't know what to do. I called my team up and I'm like, bro, I just got this, you know, I just got this, you know, this test. Yeah. I'm going to do it right now, you know. So go home, get me a suit, get me, get back here. And till then I'm going to sit in the car and I'm going to just like run my lines because I've only got like, only got 45 minutes. All right. So, um, so I was just like drilling, 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 drilling myself just because it was two scenes, it was two pages and I had a big poetry to memorize. Yeah. I'm like, how am I supposed to do this in like half an hour? Right. But I'm like, okay, just go at it. And so I did, went in, I did the audition and then I thought that was over and it was not over. But as soon as I, as I got done with that, he's like, oh, you know what? How about another scene? And he gives me another big scene and I'm like, no, don't do this. And now I'm my mind on fire, bro. What are you doing? You know, so I went back out again and I was writing it and I was trying to memorize it and I was trying to get in my head, you know. So I, I never really got to like do any kind of scene breakdown or anything. It was okay. really just whatever came to me. I just okay. had to get the lines right. So, you know, so I don't mess up and I just, just go with the flow, you know. So that's exactly what I did. I went in and I did that. And, um, then he said, you know what, come back tomorrow again for a, for another look test. So I went back home. I came back the next day. For the whole day we were doing look tests. And once that got done, um, you know, he said, don't talk to anybody except Shruti, the casting director. And I will let you know when, when I decide. You have not been finalized yet. I will let you know. I said, okay, okay. So a week passed, two weeks passed. Nobody called me, right? And I was getting very, 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 very scared. Yeah. All right. So I called, I called the casting director and she's like, he hasn't really let me know yet. How am I supposed to let you know? I'm like, look, I don't want the lead. I don't want the lead role. Just give me, just give me a role. Right. It should not be like, I lose out on this and I lose out on that because you cast yeah. somebody else, yeah. you know, and I don't get anything. So she's like, I can't let you know until she tells me, until he tells me. And I'm like, oh man. So another two weeks pass by, right. I still get no call. All right. And I'm, I'm like dying. I am dying. All right. And, uh, and she was like, he still hasn't let me know. So I said, okay. And she seemed a little like she was getting a little annoyed by me calling her so many times. So I didn't want to annoy her any further. So I'm like, okay, you know what, if it has to be, she will call me. If it's not meant to be, I've done my best, whatever, move on. So I, during that process in another month, I got, I got an, about offered about three other projects. Okay. So there was one international project and there were two domestic projects. Um, and I was getting good money for it, right? And I needed to run my house. I needed to pay my bills, whatever, whatever. So I'm like, oh, what am I supposed to do? You know, and I kept stalling it. I kept stalling it for it, you know, and kept delaying the contract. But now three months later, all right, I was supposed to make a decision because yeah. I pushed it too far. Yeah. And my agency and, and those producers, they're like, Listen, man. If you know, if you if you know, if you're gonna stall this any longer, then uh, you know, let's just stop playing games and let's just kind of like get down with this. So now I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I just like, oh, what should I do? My mom's like, you know, whatever your heart says, do it. So with a very heavy heart, I decided to cancel all those three projects. Right. Oh, okay. And uh, in one go, I just called all three of them and I said, I'm not doing it. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And um, so now I was left with nothing in my hands. All right. Uh, back to zero. And I'm like, dude, this Thank is such you. a big risk. Yeah. You're right? big on this. Yeah. So, but luckily in, in three days, after three days, once I did that, um, I got a call from his company and they're like, you know, sir wants to meet you, come to set. When I went to set, he's like, I've decided you're my Tajdar. Let's go. And I'm like, oh man. Oh dude, three months, three months. You made me wait. Just, oh man, the pressure, the, 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 the stress. It's unbelievable. It was unbelievable, the stress. But anyway, um, I know all's good. That ends well. So, 
Yeah. So yeah, that's how I landed Taj Dar, man. So really, I had no choice whether I wanted it, didn't want it. I mean, of course, who doesn't want the lead role of Mr. Bansali, right? Yeah. So yeah, I kind of, that's how I got it. That's very cool because I've actually heard a similar story from so many actors. Like when Kunal Nair got Big Bang Theory, he was waiting for so long because he'd actually almost committed to doing Three Idiots. And he said this on a podcast and uh, he was waiting to hear back about Big Bang Theory and it happened on the same day. So it's so interesting. I hear this from so many actors who say that, you know, they had to give up all their projects and they were kind of waiting and waiting and waiting. And it ends up paying off, right? Because the love and you know appreciation you're getting for the role of Dajdar is so, so immense, especially since the release of the show. And now obviously there's going to be a season two. So it's done very, very well in terms of success. Um, so I kind of want to get into a little bit of Dajdar's character because on social media and you know in the US we have TikTok, et cetera, there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not Dajdar is a red or a green flag because there's so many you know different videos and contexts put out there regarding his relationship with Alam Zib. So as the actor playing Dajdar, who do you think he was? Do you think he was a red flag or a green flag? Or do you think he was somewhere in the middle? Well, I think all characters have a great side. Nobody can be all green or all red. Yeah. Right? People have good and bad. Um, I do feel that he's more green, though, because he decided to stand up for his love and his country. And um, I think it makes him an even better person that when he decided to you know, understand that his fight for freedom is not just for himself, but it's also for those hundreds and thousands of people yeah. who don't have anybody to stand up for them. So, you know, by you standing up for all of them makes you a bigger person, yeah. you know, and sometimes you got to, you know, with great responsibilities comes, you know, with great power comes great responsibilities. So yeah. I feel that he needed to make a choice. And I feel that that's where that red flag and green flag kind of come in because, you know, that's where he said that, you know, the wife is Charlie Golgata. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, but, but he had to do it because he had to make a choice. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, everyone would be, well, they would be caught and um, there would be an issue. Yeah. So, yeah, I think he made, a, he made a good, he made a choice, even though his heart was very heavy. He didn't want to do it. Yeah. But he had to do it. So um, yeah, I feel that he's he's definitely a you know everybody's good and bad, but he's more green if if I had to consider. Yeah, I think a majority of people also agree, and that a specific line that you brought out, right? That who marries at the vibe? That's always kind of that line that shows that he's really struggling with making a decision, right? His love or his country, which is kind of the basis between which Thajdar is stuck. So. In that police interrogation scene um, where, you know, you were being beaten by the cops, specifically the British police, what was that like for you to prep for? Was there like a stunt double for that or did you do that entire scene yourself? No, no I, I did it all by myself. There was no yeah, stunt okay. doubles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 um, we've shot this, we shot this one whole day and we shot it again for some other things, but I shot one whole day, about seven hours upside down. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was quite, uh, I think after like the first half an hour or so, I think I, I went into like a trance. Yeah. So, so it's like, you don't even know what you're doing anymore. You just like, you're, because the way I was doing it, of course you're upside down, you get the blood rush, all that is there. But besides that, you know, I was, I was drinking three, you know, those really disgusting fake blood. You know, uh, and I was really big and, and the taste of it. And once it hits the back of your throat, you feel like puking. Yeah. Right. So I used to drink it and I was actually puking on set. Oh, wow. Right. And um, so I, I did that because I, I knew that this guy had been beaten. And I, I even asked him to actually, you know, beat me a few times with full power with like a stick. All right. So that I could actually feel the kind of the kind of pain that, you know, that he, one person can feel. I just doubled up the feeling of that pain, of course. But, um, but yeah, I told him to, you know, to smack me around real, to put real fire, um, you know, and uh, of course it was fire and, and lightning, which enhanced the effect, of course. But yeah. um, then the puke, which kind of, you know, when you're upside down, 
I kept it in my mouth so that when I go upside down and when I try and swallow it and when I puke, the puke actually comes through my nose. Oh. Right? Because you're upside down. So it doesn't come through your mouth. It comes through yeah. your nose. It's like a drowning kind of a feeling. Yeah. So because of that, then it and it kind of it kind of and you're upside down, so it kind of like flows into your eyes, yeah. flows into your hair. So it's, yeah, it's quite disgusting. And and that's the kind of effect that I, I wanted to give the audience. Yeah. You know, I wanted them to feel like, oh my god, yeah. But at the same time, they you know, they're like, No, please don't, please don't hit him. You yeah. know, but at the same time, when the you know, when the last when the last smack hits your head, I want everybody to go silent. You know, like <laughs> Yeah, and then he's just swinging. He's just swinging, you know. So, um, so yeah, that's the kind of effect I want. I wanted them to feel all of these emotions and then break down because now I'm like you know because Taja is dead. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I did. I didn't have any sun double. This is this is the this is the kind of um, sequence that I I went through for about seven hours, and uh, it was it it it, it felt good, and um, the kind of messages that I'm getting for it is you know. And there is no, there's no dubbing happening in that. There is no, there's no music in the background. Yeah. All of those, it, it's, it's exactly what I did over there is what is shown on screen. Yeah. And I feel that that is, that is the best. That's why that's, that's my favorite scene. Cause there's nothing to enhance your emotions. There's yeah. no music. There's, there's no like dubbing for making your voice clear or anything like that. It's just, it is what happened, happened. You know, and, and I love that. I love that about that scene. Yeah, it was incredibly impactful. And it kind of speaks into my next question as well, because I saw so many reels or TikToks of people who were sobbing at the end of the show because Thajlar dies and Alam Zip has that scene where she's going to see his grave. And a lot of people really appreciated yours and Sharman's chemistry as Alam Zeb and Thajdar, you know, the library scene or the poet scene. So did you guys do a lot of screen tests and chemistry reads together before kind of filming it on camera? Or was it more spontaneous and instantaneous that you guys just clicked and it worked out really well on screen? No, there was no rehearsals or any chemistry read. There was really nothing. It was literally, I mean, I didn't even get the first scene of the of the whole shoot um until the first day of shoot oh wow okay yeah and and i didn't get the whole script we, we were given scenes every day when we were on set that's it so you make up your i mean you kind of like have a basic idea of the backstory and you kind of you know um jumble up or mix up the puzzle pieces and kind of build your own character arc and um so yeah, that, that's exactly what we did. So it was just like really spontaneous and, uh, you know, as in what came on the spot is what we really did. Oh, okay. So is there a specific scene for you that you really liked that showcased Thajdar and Alan Zib's story really well for audiences? Because I know that there are those specific scenes that I named in the earlier question that a lot of audiences are seeing, but was there one from an acting perspective? You know, you're playing the character of Thajdar himself, one that you feel like really spoke to their love story right um i think my supposed film that i'm in scene that i would i would point out would have to be you know where he where basically in that eat scene you know where manisha Kurada kind of walks in and yeah. you know she's she's like oh she seems from a very rich family mm. yeah you know so and then there's a you know there's a reveal and then there's a there's a confession to my to my grandma and my dad and I think that that really defines our relationship that I'm willing to stand up for her at any time anywhere you know it's that I that, that I love her she loves me and um, so I think that that is one of my favorite scenes also because it was quite emotional towards the end and the way that certain me kind of. You know, did that scene and the way he directed was very interesting and uh, the kind of directions he had given me he wanted like one tear to fall from my left eye at once at, at, at an exact moment right so I, I can't I consistently needed to build up from prior to be able to drop at that exact point yeah. you know so I think that was that was very um, very exciting for me as an actor of course it was challenging but I love it I love it and I mean, we're speaking about this scene, so we have to talk about your iconic co-actor, Farida Jalal. What was it like to work with her? I mean, 
I'm someone who's grown up watching her films. So that's so cool for me to still see her on screen. So for you working with her so closely in person, what was that feeling like for you? I think she kind of like, you know, she brings a, she brings a, you know, a bundle of, she's like a bundle of joy on set. And she's always very optimistic, very present, yeah. very, you know, welcoming, um, no ego, no attitude, no matter where she came from, what she had or has. But I feel that over the, over, I mean, I think the first day itself, I kind of, you know, me and her kind of had a great bond. Right. We, I mean, especially because it was the first thing where I had to sit on her lap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we shot that, I think we shot that first. So that was very exciting because, you know, going and sitting on her lap itself is quite a, you know, um, I don't know, it's, it can be quite intimidating if you don't really know what you're doing, but I feel that she made it very easy for me to work and she is just an incredible, incredible human being. More than that, um, I believe that because of the kind of stories that she shared about her past and the kind of films that she did and how they had no, no vanity, no electricity at times, and they just had to go out in the sun and shoot, 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 and then find some shade and stand and then again, shoot, 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 you know? So it just really... Um, makes you feel very grateful for all the things that we have right now. Uh, you know, vanity bands and ACs and, yeah. you know, everything. So um, the technology is way better. So I, I believe that with her, I, I, I think I have shared the most incredible relationship um, with, you know, with somebody who's playing my mom ever. I mean, I play, I lot of, had a lot of moms, but the way she played my grandma was very, very, very special to my heart. Yeah, and you know, you just see her character and Dajdar connect to it on a different level, right? He's not able to connect with his father. And so he's only really connecting with her. And that's such a sweet thing to kind of see on screen. And I love seeing Frida Jalal play these kind of characters. She played a similar character in Student of the Year with Siddharth Malhotra. And it was very endearing to see that, right? So it's really, you know, from an audience perspective, you kind of see that bond that you guys shared off screen and on screen. Um, so just kind of wrapping up, one of the big questions that I have for you is I was watching your Cannes interview and uh, right. in one of the interviews you talked about the Jugadu pass that you do. And like one of the craziest stories is about your Emmy story. So for me, it was interesting hearing that because it kind of showcases networking, right? Even in the industry that, you know, I'm in, you have to network. Every industry has networking of a different kind. So do you feel like networking is something that's really important in the entertainment industry? And do you feel like it's right now in 2024, really important to, you know, even get the auditions or the screen tests to move forward in a project? I feel networking is important in, at all times in life. Yeah. But does only networking get you what you want? No, it okay. does not. Yeah. You know, I, I think that you need to follow a process that means you need to really work on your talents and skills and, and you know, fill up those buckets first before jumping into the networking bucket. You know, at least fill up your bucket half full and then kind of like go out and try and network. Don't yeah. just try and go out to parties and kind of like, you know, hope that, oh, somebody will see me and somebody will find me. Yeah. Nobody's out there finding nobody, right? Um, so I believe that networking, even at this day and age, whether it be 2024, I think it's very, very, very important because, you know, yes, you get you get information from them. You get, and right now, you know, the thing is that when you, when you, when you don't have success on your side, networking might, 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 and may, might not help you as much, yeah. but when you have, when you have a little success on your side, then things kind of change. Then all those connections and all that networking that you did all kind of come back to 360 and, it, you know, and helps you push you forward, especially, um, like, let's say right now, you know, like, uh, Kiramandi's craze will about go down maybe in a month and a half, right? And uh, max to max, two months to be very honest. But um, so when that happens, then all the networking that I'm doing now, whether it be in Cannes or whether it be in other film festivals or like an event that I went to yesterday, you know, all those connections come into handy because now they know me personally. Yeah. And when I message them, I can get, a, I, you know, I can get an appointment and I can get some work. And it's it's consistently just about that. So yes, okay. networking is of prime importance. Yeah, and it was, I loved kind of, now I have a 
term for networking, the Jugaru Pass. I like it. I'm going to keep that with me now for the future. Um, I'm so glad. <laughs> so kind of getting into my last question, I'd seen your post before the release of Here on Monday from the uh, premiere, the screening that happened the night before. And it had been, you know, showing or introducing Sanjay Lila Bansali to your mom at the premiere. And um, it's really interesting because I've kind of followed your journey and done research when coming up for the interview. And you've been in the industry for 14 years now almost, right? And Dajdar is gaining you so much appreciation. When you maybe were at one of your lower points in your career, did you ever have a moment of thinking, I should maybe just try and find a traditional career path, right? Maybe I should go back to school or should I try doing an MBA or you know something along those lines? Did you ever have a moment of feeling low when maybe people weren't approaching you for work or you weren't able to kind of find those people like you were saying earlier through networking that you felt like okay you know what maybe I've tried it and let me see if I need to find something else or did you always have no that no 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 I I I very strongly believe that any plan B is going to kill your plan A okay right any sort of oh if if this doesn't work out, then at least I have that. You have a backup. You know? Yeah, no backup, bro. No backup. I mean, you want a backup, then you are setting yourself up to fail. Yeah. It's very simple. Yeah. You know, it's 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 either do or die. It's it's that's it. And yeah. when you have only that option, then you do. <laughs> nobody yeah. wants to die. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and you, you're gonna hustle hard. You're gonna think of ways of how to reach out to people in the right way you're gonna you know you're gonna be more creative about it you're not gonna just like you know many people come and sit and wait they think that people are gonna come and knock their door they might go for an audition here and there they might go for parties after that i think it works out that way you know you gotta you gotta knock down and people people knock on like what 10 doors 15 doors it doesn't work you gotta work you gotta knock on like a thousand yeah. thousand ten thousand doors and yeah. then something might open might and I'm saying might, right? Um, because, um, and it's no guarantee. It's just that it might open. So, but if you don't try, then that's 100%. It's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Right. So at least in this, you might have like 10, 15% chance that something good might happen. So yeah, no plan B because it's just, uh, it's, it's a waste of time and uh, it's a waste of effort because you, neither are you good here, neither are you good there. Yeah. Uh you're kind of spreading yeah. yourself too thin then if you're trying to do both things at the same time, which I totally understand. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, that's really interesting to hear as well, because you do hear a lot of people who have, you know, have to have the backup and sometimes it can be demoralizing and it's really wonderful to hear from you that you stood behind your work and you stood behind your passion. And that's really important, right? Because if you're, you've made it now and you know, you're seeing the success reap from that. So I hope that that makes you feel really good about, you know, looking back on those low moments of like, hey, you know, I believed in myself and I reached here, which is really important. 